When we're born into this world, we have absolutely no preconceived notions of good, evil, racism, all of that. Because, well, that's the whole thing about being a child, right? You learn from those around you, and children are innocent, right? I mean, not just innocent as like, won't someone think of the children? It's much more about the fact that children are a complete blank slate. And the wonderful thing about having children, and if you're like me and have children, you know that you get to raise them with your values and turn them into your personal slaves and servants. No, I'm just kidding. I love my daughter. Well, when I was growing up, when I was a young, innocent child, you know, watched a lot of movies in the 80s, and one of my sister's favorite movies was Dirty Dancing. Okay, I liked it too. But it was her absolute favorite movie. She watched it all the time. I had to trade her Star Wars for Dirty Dancing time. And until I was a teenager, I didn't realize it was about abortion. I thought it was about training for a dance contest. Shows how innocent I was. I think the perfect example of the movie that plays innocent to children is, uh, well, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, right? The kind, confection-making Willy Wonka, who's actually a psychotic serial killer, who is also grooming children for his personal pedophilic tendencies. What, you don't believe me? I mean, come on, there's no room on that boat for Augustus Gloop. There's an exact number of seats. He knew when he was going to murder Augustus Gloop. It was all pre-planned. And he goes through each child one by one until he chooses his nice blonde Aryan boy while he quickly dispenses of all of the, uh, well, overweight and female attendees to his, uh, his, his candy factory to the point that he actually taunts the parents of the children that he murders. Police. Murder. All right, well, you think Willy Wonka and Dirty Dancing weren't about what you thought it was. Well, I think most people figured out Dirty Dancing. Maybe I was just naive. But the point is, cartoons in the 80s were even crazier. And I don't think anything is as crazy with hidden meanings as much as Smurfs. All right, in order to understand this, you have to remember where we were in the 80s, right? Remember the Cold War and when we were dealing with uh, Russia as the bad guy? Well, it's kind of still now, isn't it? Well... All right, look at those Smurfs, right? They're living in a communal village. They have one leader. They all do the jobs they're assigned. Yeah, Smurfs is a total, well, it's not even a metaphor. It is communism. The Smurfs are literally living a communist life. And we all watch it as these innocent children of the 80s collecting those little PVC slug figures thinking, oh, it's great, you know, Smurfs have free will, they get to do whatever they want, go on adventures, and yeah, not so much, that's not really how it works. I mean, if you look at Smurfs, both the animated series and the toys, every Smurf has a job. You know, there's Baker Smurf, guess what he does? He bakes, it's his job, he's been assigned this. Or, uh, you know, Painter Smurf, right? He paints, he's been assigned a one specific job, or, you know, building things or, or, or being smart, whatever it is, each Smurf has, you know, one job. Handy Smurf, brainy Smurf. They're all meant to be the exact same carbon copy with just assigned to different jobs by Papa Smurf. All right, well, what about Gargamel, you say? Well, you know, isn't he just, you know, the villain that's trying to destroy them? Well, do you remember what Gargamel was actually trying to do? I mean, yes, I know in some episodes he was trying to eat the Smurfs because, you know, we all know Smurfs make tasty, tasty after-dinner snacks. But for the most part, and in the original comic in French, he was trying to take the Smurfs and turn them into gold. He had some kind of formula that, I don't know, maybe it took, uh, you know, a hair from Azrael and some other magic potions. But yes, the whole idea was he was trying to capture the Smurfs because he wanted to turn them into gold. Hence, make them more valuable, turn them into a commodity. Gargamel represents capitalism. The Smurfs represent communism. Yet here we are in the middle of the Cold War cheering for the Smurfs. It was the craziest propaganda I think I've ever encountered. Even the concept of saying the word smurfy, or, you know, to smurf something. It was the idea of one single word that could be used for anything. Is that not literally the definition of communism, where everything is the same? Something could be good or bad if it was smurfy. You could have a smurfy day, and that describes a happy day or a sad day. And this is exactly what Karl Marx was talking about when he was defining communism. So, looking at Papa Smurf, dressed in red, hanging out, ordering all of his smurfs around... It's right there in front of our face, but because it was cute and on television and available in your local drugstore as fun little toys you could buy, no one really looked at it like that.
But now as adults looking back at our childhood, it's pretty easy to see that you weren't just hanging out in Smurf Village having a good day. No, you were Papa Smurf's automaton doing his, uh, his tasks and following your nice communistic orders. So go 80s, go cartoons. Maybe we need to bring back some, uh, we need like an anti-Smurf cartoon full of Wolverines. Although Marvel's probably just going to come and sue us over that one. But uh, yeah, it is not the cartoon that we thought it was. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if nothing else, it just starts some good conversations, because it's really good to take a step back and try to view things as an adult and not just take them as we're spoon-fed as a child. If you enjoyed this video, please just share it with others. It's the best way to show support for this channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.